Uh, hi, <laughs> welcome to our Tuesday lunch chat. I'm so happy to have you here with me today and we have lots of fun things to talk about and we have a prize to give away post fall, have a ball fall crawl. But maybe most importantly of all, later at the end of the talk, I'm gonna try some fall special candy corn. You may remember we did this last year with the Thanksgiving mix. Julia was kind enough to pick up this new one, the tailgate mix. Yes, you are reading correctly. That says hot dog and hamburger right here. So stay tuned because this is happening. But in the meantime, I wanna talk about my sweater. I finally finished a sweater and it is so comfy cozy and very warm. In fact, I jacked up the AC in here just so that I could put it on uh, for our chat because I, there's no way I can wear this today. We're headed to 84 degrees. So not exactly an 84 degree sweater, um, but it is so comfy. I can't show you how long it is, but it's longish. Um, <laughs> my, I was actually shooting for in between hip and tunic length, which are the two lengths offered by this pattern and realized as I hit the hip length that I was already at like almost a tunic length. So my row gauge was very different with these two yarns. So that's a great reminder and checking your gauge as you're going. So it turned out great. It's hitting me just below butt, just below butt. Um, I've got it on with some slacks. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> but anyway, it is absolutely a delight. So the pattern, better than basic pullover from Church Mouse Yarns. My modifications were that I knit it in the round, um, up from the bottom up to the armholes, finished each front. This was not a modification. I did a 3D to bind off. That's actually how it, what it is written. Um, and then I did a slight modification by picking up for the sleeve and doing a couple short rows, literally uh, two sets of short rows, and then doing the decreases down. The sleeves are written to be knit from the bottom up and seamed. So I was just, you know, um, improvising a little because I wanted to knit in the round, but I held together the dream and classy, dream and classy, dream and color classy, which is right behind me with some mohair silk blend. And that's what makes it so utterly cuddly. So I wanted to show you a couple of blend options and, um, Julia shared the link to the pattern, right? So you can go check that out. We don't sell it on our website, but Church Mouse sells it as a download. So you can get it from Church Mouse's website as a download or from Ravelry as a download. I highly recommend it. This is the second one I've made. I don't make a lot of things twice, but this one is worth it. And it just fits so well. Um, I can't remember the size I made. I think it's the 46, 48, so, something along those lines, 40, upper 40s. I made the upper 40s. Uh, and I was able to do it in five skeins of Classy and three skeins of the Tosh impression. So um, we have a lot of beautiful colors. We just got in this fall palette right here, uh, and I made some pairings for you. So small, 46.5. So I'm 46 and a half, and, but I blocked it closer to definitely to 47 and a half because I did look at that when, um, when I was blocking it, and I decided I would err on the side of a little bit more width because it already seemed like it was really long. Um, and that's one of the great things about a sweater that's kind of a rectangle is you can make those decisions, <laughs> like give yourself more ease horizontally because you want to reduce the ease vertically. So, um, okay. First combo. I know I turned the camera around. Heidi, isn't that great? I wanted you guys to be able to see. <laughs> so we have billowy, which is beautiful, light blue with little bits of violet purple and I've paired it up with Ariel. So now keep in mind Ariel skeins are half the size of the Tosh so you would need you know double um, the Ariel but the yardage information is all on our website. Uh, 250, 84 yards in the Ariel so but I thought those were beautiful combos right there. I didn't put my trusty bags down to toss my yarn in. Um, Tucson which this color is just stunning and it, I just think it would be really nice just barely muted with this white mohair. So it would just slightly halo out all of those color changes. Um, I don't know. I, they, I don't have the names of these, but you'll be able to tell which, which ones they are on the website. This one is close to the, the, the one I did, but not quite. This is uh, Lime on Ice. So it's like a light greeny yellow. And I paired it up with this Ariel because it's got those 
flecks of green. Oh, thank you, Julia. Julia's here because she's going to eat candy corn too. <laughs> and she just got me baskets, so I'm not throwing you out on the floor. This is the combo that I use. So this is mint drop. And I used um, impressions with Lost in Trees in Lost in Trees. So, yeah. You can see how it took this lighter color of mint drop and just gave it a little <gasps> shadow effect so all over. I gotta move that way. There so we go. Pretty. Um, so pretty. So that, that kind of gives you an idea of how your mohair would affect the color of your yarn, um, if, that kinda, if that helps. Now these, I have two combos yeah. with the same mohair because they're both glorious. This is a brand new color for fall called Naked Shame. And then Rye Bourbon in the Impressions and Gold Experience. Both of these would look stunning with Rye Bourbon. What a beautiful fall sweater. It's this is right up my alley, but I already made one, so I guess I can't do it. <laughs> um, another new fall color, which is absolutely amazing, Leather Wave. Look at the color in this. And then I paired it up with this aerial here. That would just be so gorgeous. It would just give it like this golden hue kind of. Um, oh, I love this mermaid shoes. Everyone wants a pair of mermaid shoes, don't they? And then paired up with 3441, this kind of medium teal. So, so lovely. And for those of you that like to be understated, we have black pearl and fog. So black pearl is black and fog is <laughs> almost blue black, inky, inky blue black. So we would give you this slightly blue shadow over your black, but it would be stunning. And in a really plain, beautiful shape, you know, where there's nothing really going on, I think it would be a very classic garment in those. As would this, <sighs> Serenity. Serenity now. Yeah. <laughs> Paired with $34.59. How beautiful. This would just make the most gorgeous winter sweater. Mm -mm -mm. I want them all. Another new color. Guthrie Peak. Look at all the color that's happening in there. And I've paired this one up with $34.67. It's kind of a light, sagey green. So lots of beautiful combos. If you would like to make your own cuddly, cozy sweater, better than basic pullover, there's different neck options and there's different length <laughs> options. So I did the loose cowl neck, which is just stockinette with a couple of rows of rib. There's also a shorter like mock turtle rib neck. You can also make the loose cowl like I did and fold it under like this and then seam it down and make a folded turtleneck. So lots of great options. You can fold down the uh, ribbed one as well. So I like this one because I like it to kind of hang um, open like a cowl, but this pattern's genius in that. And it gives you all the instructions you need to uh, modify your own length, modify your sleeve length, etc. Those church mouse patterns, they really know what they're doing. So. Um, Oh yeah, I don't have any color names. I put it in there. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I wish Baroka would put color names on their labels. It would just make life on in the yarn store so much easier. So that is my better than basic. And since we're talking about Dream and Color Classy, I figured it would be good to give you an update on my Ingrid sweater. You remember that one? <laughs> I started it a bit ago. Actually, I started them at the same time. The one I'm wearing and Ingrid. Might have been the problem. Yeah, exactly. The problem was I started five sweaters that day. <laughs> But I am making progress and I'm gonna show it to you here. I'm on the sleeve, I've got the neckline done. So here I am, I've just begun, I finished the short row shaping on my sleeve and I'm ready to start decreasing and cruising on downhill. And so I can tell already, I tried it on, when it opens up from blocking, it's just gonna be perfect, the perfect fit. So super stoked about this one. I'm very motivated to finish it now that I've got the um, one I'm wearing all done. And I did this in Torchwood, but you could use any of these that we've got sweater quantity in and they would be absolutely beautiful. Um, our dear Kara, Cardi Bell, she did an Ingrid in Classy and the Mohair held together, which is actually how Ingrid's written. Um, the designer, Petite Knits, did it in a, in a, um, a Mohair held with a regular yarn. So um, that's an option as well. I, because I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do this one with the mohair, I chose to do my Ingrid just with this regular strand of classy. So yes, that's the Ingrid sweater. 
Um, what's next? Oh, I was going to give a prize away in between there. I have a prize to give away. So this is another prize that is donated um, from one of our very generous uh, supporters of the Have a Ball Fall Crawl. So this is from KFI, Knitting Fever, and it is the squishiest skein of Mirasol Fulu, Pulu, Pulu probably, which is Baby Alpaca Extra Fine Merino. Squish, squish. It's a chainette and um, on the bulkier side. And the skein has 274 yards. They're calling it a worsted. It might be because this just looks bulkier than it is. Um, but anyways, it's gorgeous. So if you would like to be entered. <laughs> Sorry, now I have more hair in my hair. How do you say she can't see any of the links I'm posting? Can anyone else make a, um, make a comment that if you can or cannot see the links that Julia is sharing? Like I've shared links to all the yarn twice and the pattern like three times. All right. Oh my gosh. Maybe Facebook hates me today. I have a um, mohair in my mouth now. Um, I was just gonna scroll through the comments to see if I could see links. Oh, someone else says they're seeing links. Mary can't see the links. I uh, I don't. Oh, see well, a lot of people. No one. No. Yes. No. Yes. That is crazy. I can't see them either. Whoa. So half of the people can and half can't. I wonder if there's anything to do with being on a mobile or a computer. Um, I always do it on my computer. That's so crazy. It's like half oh, and half. Oh, if people are no, viewing the people it, viewing, yeah, because be. I'm on a tablet and I cannot see the links. Well, I will post all the links in my summary at the top of this post after. Okay, so do, if you didn't catch or hear that, Julia said all of the links that she shared, she will put into the the summary that she always adds to the videos after they are over. So you can come back to our Facebook page um, in a little bit and after I'm done with the video and the links will be posted in the summary. And then she's also very good about that with the YouTube when we get it up on YouTube um, by the next day. So don't, not to worry. Um, basically, if you are dying to go right now to our website, you're looking for classy, aerial, impressions. Those are the three things we've talked about. Okay. So what I was about to say is if you would like to be entered to win this skein, leave us a comment or if, if you have not already. And before we wrap up, I'll have Julia scroll through and pick us a random winner from all of the comments. So um, if you have yet to leave a comment, but you would like to enter this squishy skein of Mirasol Pulu, leave us a comment right now. And um, I will move on and talk about something else in the meantime, and we will come back and pick a winner. Okay. Sequence class still has openings. So we have a class. Ingrid's got a live class on October 29th. It is live on Zoom. It will be recorded, so you do not have to be present, but it's always a lot more fun if you are. But it's all about sequence knitting. And if you're not familiar with it, it is really fascinating and it can provide an endless source of inspiration for your own knitting. If you wanna mix things up, add some texture to fabric that it did, you know, that was plain, even something like this. Um, it is absolutely mind-boggling what you can do with it, and so I highly recommend that class. It's just a one day, two hours, and you can sign up for it on our website. We still have a couple of openings in that class happening on October 29th. Just go to our top, um, our top menu there, click on classes and events, and then classes, and you will go to, um, go to, <laughs> go to it. <laughs> I think this needs like a brushing to get that. That last loose bit of mohair off of you it. You did just finish it. Oh, and I did just put on lipstick. And so everything's like sticking. Um, all right. So right before the video, I got a package in from the UPS with the trunk show that we have been long anticipating for Mrs. Moon Pudding. And I know I just talked about pudding last week because I showed you Jill's sample. Here's the little skeins of pudding. And, uh, but I gotta show you more because these pieces are so, so incredible. Okay, so they sent us, of course, the same one in the, the even more wee size. This is the Tilly cardigan that Jill actually already, you know, has finished over there. And, um, oh, the color is more bright in ours. So they sent one of those, but, and then there's the adorable little matching hat called the Baby Beret little crocheted hat with a little pom-pom 
And these uh, crochet, the, the knit patterns are on Ravelry. The crochet ones are as well, or you can get this $10 booklet that has all of them. So uh, we still have this crochet booklet in stock. Unfortunately, we don't have the knit booklet in stock anymore, but all of those patterns are on Ravelry. So let's see what's in this bag. I haven't even opened them yet. Oh, this is that gorgeous blanket. Bobble baby blanket. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Bobble baby blanket, bobble baby blanket, bobble baby blanket. How beautiful is this? This is just so classic. Aww. I wish you guys could feel it because this yarn is absolutely squish alicious. Julia can oh. feel it. It is 80% merino, 20% alpaca. Super oh. cute edge. It's so adorable. Oh. I want it. Oh, it's in here? It's, it's, yeah. They didn't send the cover blanket. That's the one I love the most. Wait. No, they didn't. Yeah. Um, okay, what do we have here? Oh, this cute little welted hat. This is called scrunchy hat. Aww. Super cute. So that's a knit pattern right there with a little cute little um, eye cords bouncing around on top. And we've got one more. Oh, it's another crochet one. Oh, it's two, sorry. Oh, this is so cute. Look at oh, this. The little flower. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is the um, flower hat. <laughs> Go figure, bobble blanket flower hat. It's really pretty straightforward. Okay, and this is the last one here. The Molly cardigan. Look at this, this is so precious. This looks like an heirloom just already. I mean, just the color choices. Beautiful little yoked crocheted oh. baby sweater. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So we will have these on display here. And then um, you can find these designs in that crochet book. Here, I'll hold up the front again. Look at my baby blanket is that one. It's not called Bobble like Baby Apparently Blanket. Not. Okay, the labels might have lied on the samples because in the pattern book, it's called the Rockabye Baby Blanket, not Bobble. Um, but, but here is the cover one, which is also gorgeous with granny squares. Um, I wonder what that one's called. <laughs> Sweet Dreams Baby Blanket. Um, and now, I've, now I'm curious about like the uh, other names. I, no, that is the Molly Cardigan. So maybe they just used to have different names for their um, patterns and then they renamed them. But at any rate, yeah. just there's three adorable balls of pudding in case you just need to be tempted again. Also, the brand new pressed flowers hat that just came out to match the, the pattern in the pressed flowers shawl would be perfect in pudding. Just saying. Just saying. Um, should we draw a name? Do you want to pick a random so winner? So it turns out I can't actually scroll the comments while it's live. Oh. Okay. If I can from my phone. Let me. Experiment. Okay, Julia's gonna open up the the video on her phone to see if she can scroll the comments. I will keep talking. I have a couple of announcements. Announcements, announcements, announcements. I sang that at home the other night, and my husband had no idea what it was. Didn't everybody learn that song like at summer camp or something? Or elementary school? I don't know. I thought that was a universal thing. He had no clue what it was. Anyway, first up, I apologize to all of you who are not within driving distance, but we're going to have a knit night. We're going to have the first knit night in nearly three years. So October 12th, it's a Wednesday night. Mark your calendars now. And we are basically going to just stay open until 7 and have some beverages and some snacks and some camaraderie and we're gonna roll up the garage doors and it is gonna be amazing it's gonna be amazing it's not just me julia knew that song right yeah julia knew the announcement song uh <laughs> anyways if you at all are within driving distance of course we invite you to come and hang out with us and we aren't resuming knit nights on a regular schedule quite yet but we just are dying to have one so we thought we'd throw one on the calendar so october 12th wednesday night knit night second announcement i'm moving the newsletter to wednesdays now uh with the wednesday newsletter the link to view the replay of the chat from tuesday will be more timely instead of being a week late etc 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 so if you're wondering why you didn't get an email from us this morning that's why you'll be getting one 
tomorrow. Oh, Melanie, it's just a quick flight from Vegas. Quick flight. <laughs> Absolutely doable. <laughs> I appreciate that you thought about it, though. Um, and the last quick announcement is I probably will be doing a chat next Tuesday because I hope I will be in New Orleans with my Good Vibes girls um, doing a little long-term planning and, of course, eating and drinking and all that. And hopefully not hiding out from a hurricane. Uh, looks like it's going to be clear as long as Cadence can get out of Thomasville. So that's the roundup of announcements. Are we ready? Do we have a winner? I can't scroll more she can't than scroll. 10 comments. Okay, let me see if I can scroll. Oh, I can scroll all the way. Really? Yep, I'm going to close my eyes and just scroll and then up and down and scroll and stop. <laughs> I stopped on you. <laughs> We're doing this again. <laughs> so Julia Norman is watching. Yeah, I know. She's looking at me. I just stopped on you again. <laughs> so, well, I did comment a lot. It's on your brioche comment. I guess there is a higher odd of that. Okay, I'm letting it roll. Jennifer Stewart Gardner! Phew. Jennifer! Got somebody. <laughs> Congratulations, Jen! I'm pretty sure we have your address, so we will pop this into the mail for you. And thank you so much for leaving a comment on the Facebook comments. All right, are you ready for the, uh, the finale of today's live show? The candy corn tasting. The annual tradition, because now we're doing it again. And apparently they have a seasonal every year, so. And I just opened it, so... Tailgate candy um, corn. Here we read, come. Read all the names again, because people might want to not have been here. Oh my god! Oh, it smells weird. <laughs> it smells like what's that candy that had like not candy breakfast cereal that had mostly yellow things and then little colored ones. That oh my god! Like a lot of breakfast cereal. Pirates, pirates, uh, Captain Crunch. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you mean crunch berries. <laughs> Doesn't it smell like that cereal? Oh, it does smell like crunch berries. I love crunch berries. It smells like Cap'n Crunch. So Julia is laying out right now a lineup of what I think she's trying to discern the five different. Oh, I'm trying Here's to find our options. All five unique flavors. We have fruit punch. It's probably going to be fine. Vanilla what? Vanilla. Vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Probably going to be fine. I mean, I hope, right? Popcorn. Don't anticipate that being fine at all. Because I can't stand buttered popcorn jelly bellies. Hot dog. Oh, that one's different. And oh, hamburger. Those are the two I'm most worried about. So, um. I think those are unique. Julia has got them all. <laughs> smells weird and smells it again. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie said, she was laughing and I said, oh, it smells weird. And then I stick my nose in it again. <laughs> okay, are, do those five look those unique? Those look unique. Okay, I'm going to grab them. You get five for yourself? Oh, crap. Wait, put it back down. Um, it wasn't okay. easy to get five unique ones. They okay, don't make it go. clear. Like, there's no key on the bag that says this is the, clearly this one. This is <laughs> clearly this they one. They actually look different on the bag than they and do And they look way different, out. yeah. Um, okay, I think I have five unique. Okay, we're going. Okay, but leave them in order so okay. that we can do it at the same time. Going with that side. We're tasting them at the same time? Yeah, the same we're gonna, we're, Julie and I are going to taste them at the same time. See if we can figure out. Okay, so it's kind of pink on top and yellow on bottom. Any guesses? I'm going to say it's maybe it's hamburger. <laughs> I think it's one of those two. Oh! oh my God, it's so bad. I mean, it's, it's like so much worse than I ever could have expected. Why would they make candy like this? Oh! I think I, just, I, think I tasted the pickle. Shut up. Seriously, Julia thinks she tasted a pickle. Ew. That is wrong. It's just absolutely wrong. Okay, the one with the pink top, bad. Don't eat the ones with the light pink top. Okay, we're, we're halfway through the ones that will be bad, for sure. Okay. Okay, we're halfway through. Okay. All right, so we're going for now. If this is, I, I fear this might be hot dog. Do you think we should have one of the good ones in between? You no, want to get it over we with. We gotta, we gotta go. We gotta go. Do you need a palate cleanser? Uh, we have regular candy corn here as a palate cleanser. Okay, I'm ready. just going in orange for it. Yeah. Top, so red it's orange on, on top and it's red on bottom. I'm guessing that's mustard and ketchup. No. So. 
bad. <laughs> as bad as you think a hot dog flavored candy corn might taste, it, that is as bad as it is. So I left it in my mouth long enough that I You're can so actually much... taste some of the hot dog itself, I think. like Julia what? is way more scientific about this <laughs> than I am. She did leave it in her mouth longer, for the record. Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. Um, I have this mess of, like, half-chewed candy now. <laughs> okay. It's got to go better from here, right? I just ate the regular one. It helps. Should we do what we think I, is popcorn? Or have the palate cleanser? I think we that... should have the, what we think is fruit punch. Okay, we're going for fruit punch. This one ought to be really good. Just like Hawaiian punch. Mm -hmm. Wow. I will have four more of those, please. That was good. Go punch gets two thumbs up. Okay, this is the gamble. Is the next one popcorn okay. or vanilla? I think this one's popcorn. Okay. So I think that's the one we should try next. We're going for the what we think it's is popcorn next. Kleenex. It's um oops. Dark orange kind of or dark brown, yellow, like kind of gold. Buttery. To light. It smells buttery. Vanilla. Butter. That's pretty <laughs> nondescript. I said it's vanilla. Julia said butter. Okay. If it's if it's the popcorn one, it's not bad. Okay. It just tastes really buttery. The idea that we can't tell the difference. It does taste buttery. I'll give you that. It's gotta be popcorn. There's no taste of popcorn though. No, it just it tastes like um super buttery frosting. Yes, it tastes like buttercream frosting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it could have been the vanilla ice cream. We'll see. Okay, we're about to find out if it was last vanilla. Is white this is the last one, and it's just like white to a light, light yellow. Let me bummer if this is popcorn at the end. No! Mm. No, no. That was popcorn! That was definitely popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we talked ourselves into the vanilla ice cream being the popcorn. Oh. Oh. Eat a candy corn. <laughs> All right, here's my palate cleanser. That's a regular one. Um. <clears throat> As a lover of true, I thought I ate right original candy, candy corn. Those. Some of these are a crime against humanity. Oh. Fruit punch, though. Go ahead. I feel like I need to try vanilla again now that I know That's <laughs> it's vanilla. not popcorn. Those we were like, good. yeah, I think this is popcorn. It's really good. Those are the two edible ones. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm gonna have fruit punch again. Mmm. Mmm, Hawaiian Woo! punch. Oh, I'm warm now. Oh, Hawaiian punch is good. All right, you guys. <clears throat> Get oh. out and buy yourself some tailgate candy corn. See if you can rise to the challenge. Brock's tailgate, they have it at Walgreens. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for bearing with us and being party to our annual Genetics. fall candy corn tasting. So, yay! I won't see you next week, but um, you will get a newsletter Wednesday and the following Wednesday. So, Mwah, mwah, mwah. Adios, adios. Have a great day.